the beauty for many of us in an age of in-body image stabilized hybrid mirrorless cameras with five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half stops of IS is that tripods are becoming a thing of the past. The frustration for some of us is that as our ambitions grow to do more with our IBIS equipped cameras, we will eventually reach the point where we may want a tripod. And then it may well need to be bigger, stronger, heavier, and more expensive than what many of us might expect or are used to or are willing to pay. The saving grace in all of this is that the best of the latest generation tripods are lighter, smaller, and significantly less expensive than the industry standards of just a few years ago. 75 or 100 millimeter bowl, fluid head cine systems like Cartoni, Softler, Miller, Manfrotto, or photography-oriented systems like Gitzo and Arca Swiss. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and welcome to the first episode of our new series entitled, What's in My Kit? Today, I'm going to talk to you about two compact tripods we've been using for some time now. Three-Legged Things, $300 Punks Bryant, and FLM's $560 CP26 with CB32 ball head and QR clamp, and two new tripods which arrived on our doorstep recently. The $830 CP30 S42 with CB38 TF FT2 ball head and QR B50 QR clamp and plate. Yeah. And the $700 J with Airhead Cine A. Those are some names. For some of us, these will seem expensive and aggravating as they're just more stuff to lug around and futz with. For others, these will seem bargains and a dawdle to carry and use, much smaller, lighter, and less expensive than what came before. Are there about 30 kajillion other tripod options out there? Sure, give or take. But I like these four especially, each representing good value for money. Still, if you guys have specific suggestions for alternatives for specific cases, please leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. I learned so much from all of you. In the meantime, let's get into these. The tripods themselves are all attractively designed and well-made, though the Brian is definitely the low end of this group. Still, they're all made of carbon fiber. They all have non-rotating legs with twist locks. All of them have multiple angle legs, in fact, and three of them have five section legs, the CP30 having only four. Three of them have bubble levels, the Brian doesn't, but none of them light up like my Cartoni, though in this day and age, many cameras have built-in levels. Anyway, in the end, each offers a different set of trade-offs suited to different use cases. The really interesting thing to me is that while they are generally far more stable and taller, if larger when collapsed and mostly more expensive than the travel tripod darlings of just a few years ago, think Manfrotto Be Free or the Mifoto series, for example, they are still dramatically, what is this, the third time I'm saying this, smaller, lighter, and less expensive than the big boys, made relevant by the simple fact that the cameras we use, like the Panasonic GH5 or the Sony a6400, don't require more. Heck, even the large mirrorless ILCs like uh, this guy, the Panasonic S1H 6K recording, or my own, because that's just a loner, like a CL2, don't need more either. In fact, the CP26 and Brian have already supplanted our previous go-to systems for on-location photography and filmmaking. A Gitzo Mountaineer, I think it was, with the Arca Swiss Z1 and Cartoni. But hold that thought. Let's talk use cases. First up, our bread and butter at Three Blind Men and an Elephant. A. Talking head segments of our YouTube reviews like this. B. On-location interviews for our channel like this. Or documentary work like this. And C. On-location scripted segments for our commercial work like this. We definitely want compact size and lightweight for our location shoots because we'll generally be carrying these in or on our backpacks and we sometimes find ourselves in tight spaces. So we also want quick setup and takedown. Of course, we want value. 
but we must have sufficient stability and reliability so that we don't have to worry about either during filming or transport. We don't need the payload capacity or smooth fluid movements of a traditional Cena system like our 100 millimeter bowl two-stage aluminum cartoni focus hd nor that much height which makes either the cp26 or brian fit for purpose when we shoot with our minimalist gh5 or a6400 setups perfect together for on location to shoot interviews like this one with legendary photographer elliot Hurwitz. what were your influences that led you to that decision i don't know that i had any influences maybe my next door neighbor or my my dentist, I remember taking <laughs> pictures of my dentist. <laughs> Dentists and photography, they kind of go together. Have you noticed that? Yeah, they buy expensive materials. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like us. One or the other, or both can fit into my Titan roller. The Brian on the diagonal, the even shorter CP26 tucked along one side. When we hit the streets, either one can attach to our Lowepro ProTactic 250, or fit into the side pocket of our 20 liter peak design backpacks. But when we're shooting on location with a fully kitted out GH5, including battery, grip, cage, XLR mic adapter, a pair of wireless receivers plugged into it, possibly our Ninja 5 monitor recorder, sometimes a teleprompter, the CP26 with CB32 head becomes our first port of call. It reminds me of nothing so much as my Gitzo Mountaineer, significantly more robust than the Brian. Compared to the Brian, the CP26 sports wider diameter tubes section for section, with larger, more substantial knobs on the CB32 head, which makes it easier to lock down. Although, I actually prefer the shims and the locking of the Brian. In any case, think of that CB32 as a mini Arca Swiss Z1, and you're just about right. Here in the back cave, though, shooting with the same kitted out GH5, teleprompter permanently affixed, though generally without the Ninja 5, I prefer our carbon fiber Cartoni SDS-8. It's dedicated to these talking head segments, semi-permanently placed, and we can leave the GH5 kit just sitting there, never wondering for an instant if it might slowly lose purchase over a week or three, a sudden shift in the GH5's weight sending the whole thing crashing to the floor. Peace of mind is a beautiful thing, but this is a $2,100 tripod system, and I've often used the CP26 instead. At trade show interviews, we used to use a monopod with our Sony A6300, no cage, just a single Rode Filmmaker wireless receiver for my guest, me mic'd separately to a small Sony recorder or iPhone in my pocket. But when we switched to our IBIS equipped GH5, usually only with the XLR mic adapter attached, sometimes caged, set to tripod mode, we immediately realized we didn't need any support at all. As long as the interviews were less than 10 minutes. If we were to do a trade show interview now, and we knew we'd run to even 11 minutes, well, we'd make sure we'd do it in less than 10. But if we thought the subject truly deserved more time, and we think about this ahead of time, we'd probably pack the brine, knowing that we'd have the option once we arrived at our destination of making a monopod out of it as well. Unscrew one of the legs and call it a day. The only fly in the on-location ointment up until recently was when we shot B-roll using a long lens or wanted especially smooth pans, tilts, or slides. This used to require the Cartoni focus, but even then, in the case of slides, we have to bring along a second tripod or at least a light stand to secure the slider. At least, the sliders we have. Major schlep. Hold that thought. But three-legged things J, with that airhead Cine A, the Arca Swiss version, is the first set of sticks with leveling base and fluid-like head, since it's not actually a fluid head, small enough, light enough, robust enough, smooth enough, and keenly priced enough that I think I'd feel comfortable leaving the Cartoni at home, if I had to bring it, to be confirmed in practice. The J has a lower maximum height than the Brian, but it has wider diameter tubes, again, section for section, a new shim design and a new twist lock design, all contributing to greater stability than the Brian or CP26, the locking and unlocking of the legs faster, easier, and more certain than either. I'd say the tube diameters of the J, however, look about the same as the CP26. Not that the Brian is a slouch, but the difference is clear. The Legend series, of which the J is one of 
two models, I think, is a significant step up from what some may regard, though I do not, as the entry-level Punks series. Well, the Punks series is the entry-level line into the three-legged thing tripod system, but I consider that line far beyond an entry-level tripod, both in terms of performance and price. The thing of it is, we made necessity the mother of invention last year. We took the command decision to forget about slides altogether and limit our pans and tilts to what we could do handheld with the IBIS-equipped GH5 and G9. The good news? Our look on location has become much more natural and dynamic. Like this. I shoot in New York to feel alive. I connect with people, not the internet. My preoccupation is the real world, not menu settings. More good news? In tripod mode on the GH5 or G9, we can get B-roll even with long glass, like this. New York is a tough place. Always has been. Loud. Crowded. Lonely. The bad news? Well, it depends on your point of view. I think we'll continue to forget about slides unless we have a truly compelling need for them, choosing instead to fake them with a one-handed gimbal like the uh, Weeble. More on that another time. It's good news for our backs. Good news for additional production value like this. Not so good news for the sliders which continue to gather dust in the bat bin. And I think we'll continue to limit our pans and tilts to what we can do handheld like this. But it's also the epicenter of the world, where many years ago Life magazine photographer Alfred Eisenstadt walked to work each morning, got his next assignment, and headed out the door with his Leicas. Until we take the J or CP30 S4 II with us into New York in order to explore first our nice-to-haves. So actually, let's turn to them right now. Right. Nice-to-have use cases, which for us are pixel shifting and panoramic photography, both 2020 objectives for us. The first, second, and third priorities in pixel shifting are stability, stability, and stability. We're talking four to eight frames fired in rapid succession as the sensor shifts as little as half a pixel at a time. The first priority in panoramas is also stability, but second and third priorities are precision and repeatability, holding aside for now lens performance at the edges, especially when you move to multi-row stitching. I learned firsthand back in 2017, actually, during the launch of Sony's a7R III, that a Mifoto Globetrotter, which I owned, or a Manfrotto B-Free I borrowed, were insufficiently stable for pixel shifting. But in 2018, while testing pixel shifting on the Panasonic G9 at a Ferrari specialist, I learned that our Cartoni was. In 2019, at the launch of the A7R4, I learned the hard way to my surprise and dismay that the brine wasn't sufficiently stable either. This was in New York City because I refused to schlep the Cartoni and because I believed the brine to be sufficiently more stable than the B-Free or Globetrotter to get the job done. It is more stable, but oh well, not stable enough. This is where FLM's four-section CP30 S42 should reign supreme even above the J. It is clearly the most stable tripod among these four. Notably more stable than my old standby Gitzo 2, and again, far smaller, lighter, and less expensive than either Cartoni. Of course, it doesn't have the payload, height, ultimate smoothness, or stability of the Cartonis either. You can say that as the J is to the Brian, so the CP30 is to the CP26. Not as tall, with wider tubes and significantly improved rotating locks, netting out to a more stable, surer, and easier to set up and take down platform. It may not have a leveling base, but the CP30 is all about stability for the size and price, and in this, it succeeds. And you can always pick up a leveling base like the Acrotec for about 150 bucks, but you can also save the money by futzing with the legs. Anyway, until I've shot with the CP30 on the streets of New York, where subways and trucks conspire to rumble by, sending vibrations up through all tripods, I'm actually uncertain that it will quell the registration issues I've seen over the past three years when pixel shifted. Might the J be better at absorbing vibration? Maybe the CP26? To be determined. Of course, there are other use cases, including things like sports, wildlife, large format landscape work, copy work, that aren't part of what we do. I'll leave the suitability of any of these tripods to you, 
other than to mention two things. First, both FLM and Three-Legged Thing make even higher-end, more robust models. Take a look, for example, at FLM's CP38 and Three-Legged Thing's Mike, though so does Gitzo. Second, particularly when it comes to sports and wildlife, the case can certainly be made, and it is day in, day out, year after year, by sports photographers and birders, pros and amateurs alike, that gimbal heads are where it's at. The case can also be made that while birders are probably best served by having those gimbals mounted on tripods, because there is a lot of waiting, sports shooters are better served by attaching them to monopods. But hey, neither is my jam, so if either one is for you, I'd love to hear what you recommend in the comments section below. Man, does your head hurt? Because mine is killing me. Let's wrap this up. The overarching point I wanted to make today is pretty straightforward. Smaller, lighter, and less expensive than traditional cine sticks, either 75 or 100 bowls, as I mentioned, more robust, stable, and smooth than other travel tripods I've used or seen, these four tripod systems are all a better fit most of the time for today's mirrorless hybrids and represent some of the best trade-offs I've seen in the market today. What's that you say? Is that, come on, Hugh, if you could only have one, which would it be? Okay. Well, given our must-haves, nice-to-haves, an assumption or two to be validated, and how our sense of trade-offs has evolved over the past couple of years, it might have to be the CP30 with CB38 head. But then I'd sneak in the Airhead City A. Or could be the J with Airhead Cine A. But then I'd sneak in that CB38. That would fold up even smaller. And I could always extend the legs to just three or four sections instead of five, improving stability. Kobayashi Maru, anyone? If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below. You guys continue to be just incredible, knowledgeable, inspiring, funny. I mean, you're a joy, truly. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Grab one or both of our new Hold That Thought t-shirts you wanted us to put up at our new 3bmeptheadless.com store. Support our work by using our affiliate links down below in the show notes, dropping us coffee money via our PayPal link down below in the show notes, or even better than that, we invite you to become a patron of our work over at Patreon. Link down below. We've created our Patreon page because we are stoked to bring you not only gear reviews, but with our What Were You Thinking and Good World Gone Bad series, historical, educational, artistic morsels, and longer form conversations, not interviews, with world-class photographers, curators, gallery owners, keepers of the legacy, folks like Elliot Erwitt, Anya Sear, Mark Lubell, Ethelene Staley, and friends like Brian Smith, Paul Giroux, Nino Rakicevic, and more. We'd really like you to join us to deliver this kind of content regularly. Your support on Patreon will really help us ramp it up. In which case, as always, we thank you for it. That's it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.